I love layers. I, I think they are the foundation to everything that you're gonna do inside of Photoshop. So I, I always feel like the more information, the more tips and tricks you can find about layers, the better off you're gonna be as you're working with them. So I put together seven-ish of my favorite layer tips for you here. Let's go ahead and get started. Our first tip is gonna be the Option or Alt key in the Layers panel, okay? So there's a lot of different things that we can do. I'm gonna, in fact, let's hide some stuff here. I'm gonna open up a couple of groups. So the Option or Alt key will allow you to duplicate anything in the Layers panel. Now, we can duplicate a layer if you just press Command or Control J. All right, so if you just wanted to duplicate a layer, I would just use that keyboard shortcut. But let's say you have a mask or let's say you have some other element in the layers panel and you wanna make a copy of it. You can hold down the option key on Mac, alt key on PC, click and drag. So I can drag this mask to any layer if I wanted to. I'll drag it over a layer with a mask already and it'll ask me if I wanna replace it. But if that layer didn't have a mask, uh, it would just copy that mask onto another layer. This also works with layer styles and really anything in the layers panel. So you could say I have a drop shadow layer style underneath the text here. So I can hold down option or alt and I can drag that layer style and drop it onto another layer here. So the option alt key will allow you to drag and drop things. If you have the move tool selected over here in the toolbox and you hold down option or alt, you can drag it right on the image there. You don't even have to go to the layers panel to do it. Again, you have to have the move tool selected. Any layer that you have, you can just click, hold down option or alt, click and drag, and it'll make a copy of whatever layer it is that you had targeted there. All right, moving on from there. So we talked a little bit about duplicating things, and I mentioned that Command or Control J is the way to duplicate something. So if you have any layer, you wanna make a copy, press Command or Control J, and it'll make a copy of it. Now, you will never find that keyboard shortcut as the official layer duplicate layer keyboard shortcut doesn't exist. Where you will find it is under layer new, where it says layer via copy and layer via cut. You have command or control J, and then you have shift command J, okay? So layer via copy, layer via cut. It's worth knowing what those two do because you may wanna use that same keyboard shortcut for something different. So if I make, if I don't make a selection and I just click on a layer and I press command or control J, makes a copy. If I first make a selection of something and then I press Command or Control J, it makes a copy and punches that copy up onto its own layer. You can see over here in the layers panel. So it made a copy of that selected area and put it up onto its own layer. If I make a selection and I press Shift Command or Control J, it cuts it out of the existing layer and punches it up onto the layer right on top of it, makes a copy of it, but actually cuts it, hence layer via cut or layer via copy. So those can come in handy for different reasons uh, where you may actually wanna remove it from a layer or where you may want to copy it from a layer and just a part of the layer. You don't wanna copy the entire uh, layer to do it that way. Quick word from our sponsor, I have put together a Photoshop system course where I actually spend almost two hours on the topic of layers among all the other things inside the course. This is a, co a course specifically for photographers. And that's big because number one, it's a systematic approach to learn Photoshop, which I think is really important. I walk you through little by little, adding piece by piece to make a complete picture for you. But the biggest part is I only cover the stuff for photographers and I only cover the useful stuff for photographers, because there's a lot of stuff in Photoshop that's been there for 25 years that you probably shouldn't be using at this point. There's a lot better ways to do things. I uncover that all for you in the Photoshop system course. So hope you'll swing by the website and check it out. Moving on to another great tip, and that is if you ever want to take a layer from one photo and move it over to another photo, you can open that photo and you'll see I've got all of my, uh, my little all my tabs up here. So I've got this one image. I can take my move tool. It's a little bit weird, so follow along with me. I'm gonna click and drag, and I'm gonna hold it over the other tab. And then that will show the other photo, and then I can drag down, and it'll pop it in there for me, okay? So I'll undo that for a second, go back to this photo, click and drag, don't let go of the mouse button, don't let go, move it over another tab, hold it there, drag down, still don't let go. Once you get the cursor where you want, you can let go. And if you hold the shift key, it'll pop it exactly into the middle of the photo. Uh, another one that comes in pretty handy 
is when we're talking about different layers inside of our layers panel, I'm gonna revert back to the way I opened this document. So I opened this document, it was it has a background layer, and then I just put a texture layer on top of it. Well, you're restricted to things you can do with a background layer. You can't move them, you're gonna get an error message. You can't change their stacking order that won't just simply won't let you. And so maybe I wanna put this layer on top of another layer. I wanna take the background and put it somewhere else. You'll notice it's locked. That's a characteristic of a background layer. Most images you open with only one layer, if you open up a JPEG or even a raw photo in Photoshop, it will have just one background layer. All you got to do is just click on that little lock icon and it makes it a regular layer. So now I can move it, I can restack it, I can change the stacking order, I can do whatever I need to with that layer. Having it as a background layer doesn't really offer you many advantages and so it's good to know how to convert it to another layer so that you can start to do uh, different things with that layer and move it around. Another thing that we can do here, going back to the option or alt key, is we can zoom in. So I created a few different layers here to show you how this works. So what we do is we hold down option or alt and we can click on a layer and it will zoom in to fit that layer to your screen. So it's fitting the black box to my screen. If I option or alt click on the, te the type layer there, it fits the text to the screen. I've got my logo in the top left corner. If I option or alt click on that, it fits that to the screen. So it's a real good way, especially as you start to build up multiple layers inside of your documents. Uh, it's a really good and convenient way uh, to zoom in to a very specific part. And especially if you're not quite sure what's on that layer, uh, that's an easy way to find out. Now, keeping along with all the things that the option or alt key does, if you wanted to just see the contents of one layer and turn everything off, you can hold down option or alt and click on that layer. And that'll turn the little eyeball visibility icons off for all of those layers, except for the one that you option or alt clicked on. So again, option or alt click on that eyeball icon again, to turn everything back on. If you wanted to see what's on one specific layer, Option or Alt click the eyeball and you can see just that layer again, Option Alt click back to turn it on. Now another way that you could do this, it's a little bit, can be clumsy but can also be very, very useful, is you can turn off multiple layers. You got a little visibility icon here, that little eyeball. Well, you can click and turn something on and off but you can also click and drag and turn all of them off and click and drag and turn them all on. So just click and drag up and down and you can turn multiple layers on and off. Finally, wrapping this up with one of my favorite ones, I'm gonna say last but not least because I think this is, this is something I do whenever I sit down at a new computer or if I ever reinstall Photoshop, anything like that, this is something I do immediately. And that is the thumbnail size. My thumbnails are bigger because I made it that way. You can go to the layers panel, follow it over to the right hand side. Every panel has a little hamburger menu that is panel options. So we can click on that little panel options icon, scroll down to panel options. And the default for layers is the smaller version. So if you click OK, you can see that. You can see every layer thumbnail is very, very small. It'll let you have more thumbnails in the layers panel here. And if you're a graphic designer or an illustrator or a web designer or something, I could see the reason for that. You can, ha you can fit a lot more on your screen here. As a photographer, you're typically not putting that many layers inside here. So I prefer it a lot bigger, plus my eyesight's just not that good. So I go in here and I turn it to the large version click OK. Now it makes it a lot easier to work inside the layers panel and to actually see what's on the layers that you're working with. Now those were tips for Photoshop. I've also put together a free video on my favorite tips for Lightroom. In fact, it's probably one of my most popular videos. People lose their mind when they watch this. Almost almost everybody that comments says they didn't know any of the tips inside of there. So if, uh, if you're looking to learn a couple of little tips inside of Lightroom Classic, that video is a great place to go next. Next.